places and talking about things that make me lol i saw this very very interesting <laughs> tweet somebody shared earlier on today that was a if anything that kind of it kind of gave me a bit of a it was triggering right it reminded me of plenty of startups i've worked with over the years where like i said they just don't know what they're doing everyone's sort of like winging it and I remember using this guy used this phrase, um, Stu, who I used to work with, used this phrase called them, what do they call them? Chances, is it chances? I think it's called chances. Because I think, you know, working on a few stuff with him, you'd bump into a lot of these kind of media PR uh, um, account manager types, right? Who are just like, I don't know, like nothing really, there was nothing special about them, but they seemed, they, they, there was nothing really interesting about them as people. It was more so the people they seemed to be adjacent to or standing, yeah, no, right? Adjacent to or people that were in their orbit or like the access they had. That was basically what made them um, somebody, somebody, a desirable person you wanted to get in touch with. But as in terms of actual work, what they actually did day to day, I don't have a clue. They don't probably have a clue either. Um, but they was, but they're also the people that give you the most sass. They're the ones that kind of um, give you the most pushback, right? They're the ones that sort of like you know ask for the moon and the stars, you know, when it comes to negotiating things. Just interesting, just as you see the level of entitlement. But I guess if you are, because I think most people know when they are kind of bluffing it, right? Most people know, especially when you get sometimes you might stumble in a job that you're probably not meant to have, right? But you're just bluffing it. But most people know, and they're kind of a bit humble and in, in at least at least outwardly right maybe inwardly you kind of tell yourself you're the ship at least outwardly you kind of you know there's a sense of humility but these people these psychos that i've kind of bumped into similar to the video i'm going to show you they don't have that they actually sometimes believe the shit that they come out with right they actually believe they believe yeah i'm i'm, I'm going to change the world with this you know um the uber of pizzas or whatever bullshit app they've got started right i was like but this isn't the uber it's like yeah no no you don't understand man this is for people that want stuff in two minutes not five it's like okay cool do your thing then do you know what i mean like and this is an example someone posted this on twitter so this is from some guy called jack wagner and supposedly it's um a hype house for adults so an adult content house supposedly some sort of company that does what that films viral content in some hidden hills mansion somewhere in the middle of LA. Like it, it looks really, really ridiculous. Let's play it here. But again, it reminds me of everyone I worked with. Our adult TikTok house called the Honey House. Sam is filming workouts for her YouTube channel and her Imagine living somewhere called the Honey House without wanting to slap yourself profusely every day you woke up before you get to work. Honey House. Can you think of any other name? I know all the other dumb ones are taking like swag and hype and drip. I don't know, whatever houses they've got. And it's for the kids too, right? It's, it's a bit r worded anyway, right? Seeing these kids dancing in front of, you know, TikTok cameras, right? Um, and they're not even dancing. It's just weird. It's not, it, you, would you even deem TikTok dancing? It's not even dancing. It's something else, isn't it? It's really performative, like the kind of mouthing and shit. It's just, you know, it's the kind of thing that back in the day you'd get bullied for, right? So back in the day, it's the kind of thing where if you had an old, you know, those old mitre balls, right? That were really levery, levery and kind of rippled all over the place. Loads of nice thick leather panels that were pumped up really hard. Like you, you went to you went to a petrol station, you pumped that ball up so it was rock hard. That's the kind of kid that would get that that ball straight to the face. Straight to the face, bang! Like, what are you doing, bro? What are you doing? Come play football, man. What are you dancing TikTok for, bro? <laughs> That's what it will be. <laughs> but this is absolutely her 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 hilarious. Her team is here shooting it. Nick works for a big time agency, and so he's always talking to brands and helping them. I'm sure most of it's a parody. Um, it has to be right. Big time agency talking to brands. What on a balcony, FaceTiming with? It's just yeah, oh God Almighty. And always, always, the brand and strategy dudes are like, <sighs> brand and strategy dudes are the ones that are always popping off to a loo when you go out and stuff night out, right? You know what the vibes are on that one, right? They're also the ones that are like never chipping in for that stuff, right? Number one, number two, sorry. They're also the guys who are like, talk a big game when in the office and then when they get out there, they're an absolute mess and a liability. And they're also the ones that are like, um, ambiguously aged, like this guy. He could be anywhere between 26 and 55, right? You have no idea. <laughs> With their marketing. B is a mindset and meditation coach, so she's always leading guide. Look, does, does this girl even pay her own bills? And she's somehow a mindset and meditation coach.
What's been the most stressful moment in her life? Losing her iPhone? Breaking up with her boyfriend? Dropping her scrunchie in the toilet? Like, come on. Really? Mindset. And this, this is not even a diss to her because I've been in that position, right? Where you're the kind of what? You're a course director. You're a program co-producer. You're like, what? What am I programming? Do you know what I mean, right? I scraped by the tip in the skin of my teeth. And, you know, get me wrong. I, you know, I probably could apply myself more, but in school, I scraped, I scraped through every single grade. <laughs> Up until I got to uni, maybe. That was the only time I thought, okay, I actually enjoy the course that I'm doing, right? Or maybe sixth form. And, you know, you pick your A-levels that you actually like, to you courses that you actually enjoy. But prior to that, like, and I'm teaching people? I did meditations on her computer. Aaron is an e-com wizard and... Lols, uh, uh, look at Erin the Ecom Wizard, supposedly. Look how quickly she minimizes one of her windows. We've all been there, innit? When you're looking at stuff you probably shouldn't be looking at. <laughs> so she consults. Or maybe it's just Slack, so she's trying to pretend that she's doing work. I don't know what is going on there, but that's Lols, right? The minimizing of the window. And advises a lot of better for you brands, so she's always sitting here on her computer. She's, she advises other brands, right? E-commerce assistant. Probably guess the amount of shops that she's opened. Do you think she even knows how to open a Shopify? Has she ever made a sale? Has she ever packaged anything? Sent it out to post? Taking product shots? Written copy for a product? Like legitimately try to pay rent selling items and you're advising other brands to do the same thing. It's like, come on. Computer. You know, with your feet on the chair as well. Crushing it. Jared's a fitness trainer and he's also an actor. So if he's not reading his side. Of course he's an actor and a fitness trainer, but of course. He's working out and he's probably eating. Nick is a mindset. This is like a, you know what this could be like? Um, R.I.P. to him anyway. Well, R.I.P. but you know what I mean. But th this could be like a Crystalia sketch. Him playing each of these characters, isn't it? Like, it really, you could, you could be that. But this really does remind me of every startup I've worked in, right? Random people on the phone. Look, they've got their, um, what do you call them? They've got all their little stand-up notes, right? Of stuff that they're working on moving it down like taking it off in the morning standing up going through what the task they're going to do just basically justifying your job you know it's like you're it's like you're it's like you're like you're about to get shot in it in the morning you have to just justify everything you're doing right um make it sound important stuff that doesn't really make it that hasn't really not ever going to move the needle you just got to justify your salary or the fact that you went out on the company card again yesterday <laughs> But this is all it is, just random people walking around, talking on the phone, especially now, especially imagine what it must be like. Thank God I'm not in the office now at the moment, right? Working remotely has been a blessing. But imagine what it must be like. It's working in a startup now with, with AirPods. It's worse enough having, you know, it's bad enough as it was, you know, having people walking around with hands-free kits. But imagine with AirPods, how people, because people are already, you know, people when they get AirPods, they act, they, they, they switch up in it. Imagine what they're like now with AirPods in a startup, right? Like walking around in slippers, a pair of Birkenstocks, some high water jeans, right? Uh, a Starbucks coffee in one hand or something from flat white or something bougie like that. You know, talking in business code, sounding all optimistic about an app that no one wants. He's <laughs> a motivation coach and so he's always firing people up on the phone. Oh yeah, man. And as well, like F, like F Y, not not that I give a shit, but like, how white is this house? Like, it's as white as the walls, isn't it? It's Caucasian to the max, bro. Like, I mean, it's so Caucasian, you could call it couscous, bro. It's mad. Evan and Dina are models Look. and fitness trainers, and if they're not doing a photo shoot, they're working out. Oh, yeah, of course, like, that's what all models do, and it just work out instead of just you know uh, developing some sort of eating disorder. That's what most models would just work out. Yeah, right. <laughs> And then there's me. Of course. And doesn't he not look like every other founder that you've ever met at a startup? Doesn't he look like every other founder? Right? Doesn't he? Like, uh, it would want to be, um, what's that guy from WeWork? They've all got a similar sort of look in it. The WeWork founder, right? Floppy hair, mousy floppy hair, um, disingenuous, dead behind the eyes, smiles without moving of the eyes. Um, they probably swan in on a scooter. Uh, they have a kid that's named Max or a dog that's called Tyson. You know, that kind of shit, right? They wear New Balances with no socks. Like, <laughs> just flipping dances, man. Oh, my God. Uh, but big up the hype. Big up the Honey House, not the Hind House. The, the Honey House. Big up the Honey House crew. 
do your thing in it and of course they're on tiktok with all these kind of cringy videos that i'm sure no one no one wants to watch i'm just gonna scan through them here but you know you know the vibes in it just mad caucasian people smiling in cameras um purposely why you know covering themselves in vaseline and trying to make content that goes viral in it look at it that push-up bra so you can click on nails fingers people running fitness squats wigs of course red cups because you know it's not a it's not social media content without red cups god almighty man pray for me pray for everybody but hey everyone's trying to live in it we're all trying to live 